So let's take a tour of the Galaxy S. On the side we have volume buttons and a lanyard connector. 5 megapixel camera, no flash, they're targeting the iPhone. On the back, underneath the cover is a micro SDHC card slot, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and the micro USB connector is covered by a sliding door. On the bottom we have a microphone. Now let's compare it with the Google Nexus One. Notice how the Nexus One's AMOLED display is much more reflective than the Galaxy S's. Check out the reflection of the camcorder. Also, the Galaxy S is Super AMOLED has a much better viewing angle than the Nexus One's, which is already really good. It's easily the best phone display I've ever tried. Now the Nexus One is shorter. They're about the same thickness. And the Nexus One is a little narrower. Of course it's got a smaller display. Next up we have the Milestone. So the Milestone's got a smaller display. It's narrower, shorter, and you guessed it, it's thicker because of its slide-out QWERTY keyboard. Here's the Sony Ericsson X10A. The X10A also has a 4-inch display, but it's just a regular LCD, while the Galaxy S has the Super AMOLED. They're about the same width. The X10's a little narrower. X10A is shorter, and the X10A is a little bit thicker. Here's the iPhone 3GS. 3GS has got a smaller display. They're about the same width. 3GS is a little shorter. And the 3GS is a tiny bit thicker. Now the Galaxy S runs Android 2.1 with some Samsung customization. So Android 2.1 has 1, 2, 3, 4, 7 different home screens. There's also a multi-touch support. This is the Applications button, Home button, Menu button, and back button. Those buttons normally light up. Normally you get shortcuts, widgets, folders, and wallpaper on the main page, but with the Galaxy S you have these extra Samsung widgets. For example, the daily briefing widget is, uh, has some Yahoo News content. Notice how responsive the Galaxy S is. So these are the extra widgets you get with the Galaxy S. Now the main menu is organized into screens which you can scroll between sideways just like the iPhones. So I prefer this over the regular Android way which you just have a really long screen of icons. Besides the regular Android fare, Samsung also includes a DLNA client which can play files from another server, play the files on the phone to another player, or play um, play files from another server via another player on my phone, something like that. It also includes an extra media player besides the built-in Android one, presumably which has more codec support. The software is not really done yet, so not everything is included here that you're going to get. For example, Samsung will have some sort of Samsung social media networking application. Now, like I mentioned before, the Galaxy S has a 5 megapixel camera, but it has a trick up its sleeve in that it can record HD video. So let's check out the camera application. One thing I really noticed is that there's no, there's no flash on the camera. Neat. And you have some settings, none of which turn a flash on since it doesn't have one. You can drag the drag it around to focus on different spots. Here's the camcorder. So the camcorder can record high definition video. Check it out, 1280 by 720. 
that 720p video. Video takes up about one megasecond, so the built-in 16 gigabytes can fill up quite quickly if you take a lot of video. Here's a sample video. It's 720p. It's actually not bad. Now besides the Android keyboards, Samsung want, includes the swipe keyboard. So you just press that to turn swipe on and I've done demos of it before, but you just slide your finger between different keys and it spells them out for you. Normally I'm better at swipe than this, but anyways, you get the idea. And like I mentioned, the, next, the Galaxy S is running Android 2.1. Anyways, that's the Samsung Galaxy S.